All right, so it's time for another old school automation tutorial. And this time I'm going to show you how to connect Airtable to Google Calendar. And not just the crappy half-assed way that it works, you know, with like Airtable's own automations. No, no, no. We're going to do this properly. So without any further ado, let's get stuck in. Oh, by the way, hi, my name is Alex. And yeah, here on this channel, we talk about anything and everything automations, Airtable, databases, low code, AI, you name it, we freaking do it. So let's get stuck in. Okay, so let's get started with a quick demo where I'm going to show you how the whole thing works in like a minute. So I have a table here. We're using Airtable this time around and I've created a quick event. I've got a description. I've got the ability to link this to a parent event, although this is actually for automation purposes. We'll see how it works. We have a little flag here to say whether or not this is a recurrent event. Let's say yes. The duration of the event is obviously 30 minutes. Let's say I want the event to recur for three times and I want it to be on a weekly basis. So if the event is on Monday, it will be Monday, the next Monday and the next Monday. Then let's just set the date of the event. Let's say it was last Monday at 9.30 a.m. And action. The action would be, in this case, to create an event, but you can also delete a certain event or you can delete this event plus any related events. So let's go ahead and create the event. And after a few seconds, you'll see how it will populate in our calendar over here. There we go. And let's say I want to check out what happened in Airtable. You can see that I've got my first repeat and second repeat that were created. Now, by the way, you only see this at 10 a.m. in my calendar because I am GMT plus one. Well, actually, I'm GMT plus two, but British summertime, because this is in GMT, is also GMT plus one. So there's like a one hour difference. But anyway, bottom line is that it creates the events. Let's just say that I want to now delete this event. You'll see how it will, it will be now also deleted from our calendars. And that's it. Simple as that. Now, let's take a quick look at how to set this up. And we're going to begin with the database itself. Now, in terms of the database itself, there's nothing really much going on. Let me show you what I mean. I've got just a bunch of basic fields over here. We have a name, description, a link to the table of events itself. There is a simple check mark. There is a, just a couple of drop downs three drop downs. We've got a event date time. And of course, we have a simple drop down for the action that we want to take on said event. There's also a few hidden fields. Let me go over them. There is a recurrence formula. So the recurrence formula is something that we're going to need later on inside of the Google Calendar integration module in make. This basically creates a nifty little string based on these particular choices. Now, Inside of duration, I have my duration values, 30 minutes, 60 minutes. I have a recur for one time, two times, three times, four times, and five times. Of course, you can have more if you want to. There's recurrence frequency, weekly, bi-weekly, and monthly. Bi-weekly means, just to be clear, let's say you, you basically skip a week. So if it's Monday, then you skip next Monday and then you do the Monday after that. Basically, it repeats the for the Monday after that. Well, of course, we have an event date, as I said, and we have our three actions, which are create event, delete event and delete event plus related events. Now, let's move on to the other three hidden fields that we have. Two of them, super straightforward. They just store data. One is called GCAL event ID, GCAL start time. And we also have a unique GCAL event ID, which basically is a formula formula that looks something like this. Feel free to copy it. Basically, it compiles this with this if this exists. Otherwise, it will just bring this in so that basically every single event has got a unique license plate, so to speak. That's it in terms of the database design. Now let's actually talk about the automation that runs behind the scenes. If you have been following our channel, you probably know that automations usually begin with a trigger. And my favorite way to trigger through, well, when using Airtable is just by setting up a quick little automation that sends a Airtable record ID 
to make. This is how I set it up, but this time it's a little bit different. I'm actually using the trigger type of when a record is updated and I'm actually looking at the field that's called action. In other words, previously I used to use uh, check marks, but for this particular automation, I do prefer using an action that basically says, you know what, basically I have a single field that does multiple things and I only trigger when that field is updated. And when it is updated, then the actual action that we do, that we take, is to run a script. This is what the script looks like, and it's been exactly the same for pretty much all the automation videos that we've done. The only thing that you'll need to change is this particular webhook. Just fetch the one that Make gives you from this initial webhook and paste it in there. Don't forget to add the variable name record underscore ID, just like I have done here. And then also don't forget to map the Airtable record ID, like I've done here just by pressing this blue button, just mapping this particular Airtable record ID field. That's it. Once you're done, press finish editing, turn the automation on, and your trigger is set. Now, let's actually talk about the meat and potatoes of this automation, and that is basically the make automation. The way that this runs, and just a quick disclaimer, there's more to this automation that can be done to it, but I'm establishing a simple baseline where you're taking care of creating events, making sure that you're able to create recurring events, and deleting events. Things that are missing that we typically add when we do a project for a client are handling updates. So if I want to update an event, that will also be incorporated in this automation and also time zones. But for simplicity's sake, I've decided not to go into that sort of depth and focus on the most important things. And that is how to create events. Now, let's take this from the start. So we have our webhook that hits the webhook node over here. Then we simply perform a get record where we simply get that event record. Then we have one of the most important pieces of this whole scenario, and that is this router that has different routes. Now, the route that deals with creation only allows actions that contain create event, right? So that will basically then go over on this particular top part of our automation. And the first bit of course, is just to create the, an event. And I've mapped it like so. The only interesting thing that I would say is worth mentioning is the following. Always include an event ID inside of your description. Just add this in, map in the event ID from Airtable as part of your description. This is going to be super useful in just a moment. The next thing that we need to do is also map the recurrence formula that we created and use if empty just to ignore it if the recurrence formula is empty. In other words, if you don't need a recurring event, just make sure that make ignores this particular field. And that's basically it. The rest of the mapping is kind of like standard. Other interesting thing that we need to do next is we need to update that first event with the gcal ID that we get from Google Calendar plus the start time. Print those two things in in the next module. Now, following that, we have a search events and we need this because we want to make sure that we find the events that Google Calendar just created for us. And, you know, sometimes maybe I would suggest over here between these two modules, maybe add like a quick little sleep module because Google Calendar might not immediately create those events. You might need to get make to wait maybe for five, 10 seconds and then perform this search so that you will actually find results. And this is how I've mapped this. Essentially, my query looks like this. I've got my query that basically has got the ID of my first event because all the recurrent events will carry that tag. Of course, in our case, in our previous demo, we had three events. And this is correct because this actually found three events. But we also want to compare those events. And here's what I'm doing. I'm basically saying, you know what? In Airtable, 
find me all of the events that you can for this event ID. At this point, there will only be one because you haven't created the two recurring ones that Google Calendar created. So that's why we have a quick little filter over here, which basically says total number of bundles equal to zero. And you see my search here found one because the other two GCAL event IDs simply couldn't find a match in Airtable. And that's fantastic. That's exactly what we need. The next step is to basically install an increment function over here because we wanted to count every single time there is a new event that we need to create it back in Airtable. And we needed to count those. One, two. Here's why we need them. Now, we actually obviously need to create those events back in Airtable. And as you see, now I've used a quick little trick here to create ordinal numbers like first, second, third, fourth, fifth, etc. by using parse date, adding my increment function, and then formatting that date like so, D in the format of DDDO. That will run up to the number 365. So yeah, if you have more than 365 recurring events, this will probably break. But yeah, hopefully this makes sense. And then I'm just adding a little space and then the word repeat so that you will end up with something like this, second repeat, third repeat, and so forth. Now, the rest of the mapping is actually quite straightforward. The description is the description from module number two. The parent event is from module number two. Again, the start time is from module number 16, where we're searching for those Google Calendar created recurring events. And we're also mapping the event ID in there. Simple as that. That's basically the create part. Now let's discuss the deletes. The deletes are a little bit easier. So first of all, we're handling the delete of a single event when the action is delete event. Now here, it's very straightforward. I just map the unique GCAL event ID from module number two. I then perform a quick little one-to-one -one search with an Airtable. I find that record. In fact, you know what? I don't even need this search <laughs> because I could basically just delete the record straight away. In fact, let's just simplify it on the fly. So here we go. All you have to do is just map the ID of module number two. That's it. Simple, right? Should have thought about that in the first place. But then let's talk about deleting all of the events. And again, this is actually kind of straightforward, but I want you to notice one key difference. When I'm deleting a single event, I'm actually mapping the whole unique ID, this part. Here, when I want to delete all of the events, the parent one and the recurring ones, I actually split this and I get only the first part of that ID. In other words, I get just this part, all the numbers and letters before the underscore. And if you map that in, instead of the full ID, it will delete everything. Now, you can see where I'm going with this. In Airtable, I'm performing a quick little find of all the records that relate. And I've basically done it like so, where I'm taking the first parts that I mapped over here. I perform a find against the unique GCAL event ID. And I wanna make sure that that is over zero. In other words, I have more than zero results. I have a quick little filter here. Total number of bundles not equal to zero and then I perform a delete. And the delete is basically the ID iteration from module number 26. That's basically it in terms of the automation. So that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this quick little tutorial. I know I haven't covered absolutely everything, but I feel like this is a very, very solid foundation for you guys to like explore even further with things like updates and time zones, like I mentioned in the video. Let me know down in the comments if you agree with things that I've said, if you have any other ways that you would like to do this. I try to answer absolutely every single comment. That's it from me. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.